This is a demonstration of the Krauss DSA-10 Mark II contact angle measuring instrument. The DSA-10 Mark II is a flexible measuring instrument for the determination of contact angles of a wide range of samples. The contact angle of a Cecil drop on a solid surface is measured. The drop environment can be gas or liquid. Measuring values of contact angles are obtained automatically through the evaluation of a digitized video image as displayed on the controlling PC. You can use the instrument for the determination of surface and interfacial tensions of liquids and the software uses the pendant drop shape analysis for the evaluation. The DSA-10 Mark II offers the following measurement of contact angles of single drops of liquid on a solid surface, measurement of advancing and receding contact angles by volume control of sample drop, evaluation of a digitized video image of a drop utilizing five industry standard methods, De determination of surface free energy of solid samples with several calculation methods, and an integral database of test liquids, liquid groups, and test procedures and measurement data. Let me first point out some of the features of our measurement bench here. Uh, very lightweight, yet at the same time it's got just enough so it's pretty much vibration free. It has individual leveling feet on the bottom as well. Uh, this would be your Y travel, this would be your X travel, <clears throat> and of course this would be your Z travel up and down. In addition we have a manual <clears throat> um, holder here where we have both Z motion to bring your needle down close to your, your base and we have a Y motion back and forth as well. On this side we have the lens which is a focusing lens here along with a zoom lens as well. The camera can be tilted up and down using this dial right here and the adjustment of the light intensity would be behind here where we have this knob here which will light up our illuminator. This is where we connect our video line out from here. That's just one single line. It goes into the back of our controlling PC, which of course has a frame grabber and will process the video. Now typically, you can measure different types of angles. Uh, in this case here, what we're doing is we're going to put a drop, for example, of water and uh, we're going to measure the contact angle. Uh, we can measure different modes of angles as well. Uh, we're going to try, hold on here, we're going to do one of these as well where we're going to just bring a drop down and let it just touch the surface and we're going to measure the different angles on it as well. Now, we're going to start off by demonstrating it by using these standards that come with the uh, instrument. These are very, very handy. They're actually calibration standards. They also come with a very detailed uh, instruction on how to calibrate the equipment, uh, especially to your um, particular application. So we're going to start off, uh, we'll use this one first. Now, we'll lower our stage. And I have a rough place that I put these. And we'll leave that right there for now. Now, here in our software, 
we're going to first open up a window. And acquire. And we're on here. Now we will move our sample. Okay, we have our first calibration standard here. I always like to use those lines as a focusing aid. First we'll establish our baseline. We'll then extract our angle, make our measurements, our standard default, and display our data. Wow! Uh, 30.1. Very, very good. Uh, now what we'll do is I'll just freeze that image for a minute. And I'll move this first one. Put in the second one here. Approximately where the other one was. And now we will reset our, oh, there it is. Okay, we'll move this right here. Make sure we're in focus. And establish our new baseline. One moment. Display our data. Wow. Uh, 60.2, and this is exactly uh, 60 degrees. So that's definitely a good one, too. We'll freeze that image. Remove this standard. Always grab them by the edge. Uh, this is a coating similar to what you'd see on fine optical mirrors. So you have to be careful to keep your fingers off of them. Now this last one is pretty good. This is a, a, uh, a stencil drop, a cecil drop as they call it. I'm going to put this approximately back where I had the other one. And we'll see what we got here. Oh wow, okay. Now, lower that down a little bit. Oh, I want to use my lines to make sure I'm still in focus. That's pretty large. So again, this is the zoom that's available for use as well. All right, now let's establish a baseline. There's our new baseline. Now for a stencil drop, you need a different measurement. There we go. And 119 and it's um, exactly 120, so that's pretty good, that's pretty close. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put away our standards, and we're going to measure some actual drops. Also, uh, along with the instrument comes a convenient vacuum chuck. So if you need to hold things down real tight as they're being tested, uh, this can be put up there on the pedestal. Now, here we're going to go to real time. Now I'm going to lower a hypodermic needle a little bit. There it is. But also, we have to bring up the z-axis. Uh, we are we that is only blurred because the lens is on the edge right here, but we're in fairly good focus on our needle. Now we're going to bring this down a little bit more. Okay, and now we're going to do our first drop. do is pull our needle back up a little bit. There, that's nice.
Okay, we'll move this up a little bit. Now, the ideal image would be to get a mirror image on both sides. We'll turn up our light just a little bit here. All right, we will focus that as tight as possible. And since it's such a small drop, we'll zoom in on that a little bit. Now, oh, it's just a coincidence that we're on there, but let's move it up so we know we're, we have a new baseline. Here's our baseline. We're going to extract our angle. We're then going to measure it using the standard. And our data says that we are about 62. 62 degrees uh, on one side. 61.8 on one side and 62.2 on the other. Now, we'll leave that drop right there, okay? And we'll bring our syringe back down again. And what we will do just to show the change is we will add another drop to it. There. And let's put one more in. Now we'll pull this back. Okay. Now we were at uh, an average on both sides of 61.8 before. Now that we've added more liquid, which is dispersed on the surface, let's see what our angle measures at. Our new baseline, extract our angle, take our measurement, and results. Wow, what a difference. Just by adding two more drops of the same amount to the sample, uh, we've gone from 61 down to uh, about 47 degrees on both sides. Um, one of the other things that we can also show with this is that let's say we wanted to um, save this image. We could save this image as Test. Oops, oops, hold on, folks. Let me get that straight. As test drop number four. Water. Or whatever your particular thing was. Now, we could save that. Uh, we could close all this up. And now we could put this little drop screen down here. Right click on it, open, and uh, we'll put in our test drop right there. Now this is an example of one that I took yesterday. And even though that this, this is a saved image, even though this is a saved image, uh, we could do similar things with that well. Once it's saved, you can um, make all the measurements you want with it. So this is, you could save a series of different uh, drops and then you could go back to them and you could individually um, uh, measure them and plot them out. See, now we have a full plot if we want. Now, Okay. Now the same stands true for this. If let's say we wanted to video something as well. Hold on, we're going to close everything up here. A couple of other features that you can use is you can take a snapshot, uh, still photography, or you can make little movies. Uh, let me give you an example. Now. If I drop this window down and I right click on it, I can open some of my other measurements. Uh, we'll just put this one in there for now. Now, of course, this is 
This is a saved image. And off of this image, you can, even though it's saved, you can still do your series of measurements. Close this down a little bit. Ah, there we go. And it says it's uh, 60, angle is 60. Uh, that's again from a, a saved image that you have. You can also, as I mentioned before, do little films, uh, little videos. Uh, here's an example of one that I just made. Now, here I have a drop, and I'm going to add another drop to it. Before I do that, I'm going to measure the first drop in the same standard, typical fashion. Okay, and it measures 80 and 80, respectively. Now, I'm going to close that, okay, and I'm going to play this movie, add a drop, two drops. Okay, I added two drops. And now we can measure again. Ah, and adding two drops, change the angle to uh, 86. Let's try it one more time. We're going to add, oh, I guess that's it. That was the last drop there. But as you can see, you can uh, video um, record your work and then watch it progress uh, in one direction or the other. And that is a very, very handy tool. And we're pretty much done with our demonstration. We'll just leave you with one last bubble here. over here and we'll give it one more nice focus and let's see, put our baseline in oh that's going to be different because it dropped in a more circular type fashion wow One twenty and one twenty. That's where it's catching it, right on that angle, right there. Very interesting. Once you use the software and you start to go through the different processes of uh, different methods that you can use, um, it becomes pretty easy. Uh, even take this one here. You can measure the width and the height of it. One oh seven. Ah, much different. Okay. Again, it's very simple to use. The uh, measurement bench itself is very easy to maneuver. Very smooth uh, lead screws in it. Works very well. And this completes this demonstration.